Hey guys, today we're going to talk about 10 new features introduced in Affinity Photo version 2. So as you may know, the program received totally new version, version 2.0 in November and bring multiple new and powerful features and tools. So this will be a brief list, we will not go too deeply into each feature. I just want to mention important features for you guys so you can make educated decision that you want to upgrade to version 2. Or maybe you upgrade already but you don't feel much difference. Maybe you are not using those new tools, new features. So let's check them out. The biggest feature that everybody mentioned is that you can do non-destructive raw editing, raw developing nowadays with the new version. So if you've got a raw file and you go into it, it will automatically be moved to the develop persona that's over here at the top. We are in different personas, so the tool set is different. And you can, of course, develop your raw files using different sliders and tools here. And the good thing is, it's all non-destructive. So if I make this really cold like that, and then click develop, go back to the main persona, photo persona, and then later on in my project, I change my mind. I wanna redevelop this raw image. I can simply go to the develop persona again and move the slider back here, make it warm again. All right, so that's not destructive. Now developing raw files within Affinity Photo projects are not destructive and this can be used across the suite. All right, so that's great. That's feature number one. Feature number two, it's also a big change. This is all about masking. So while working with graphical projects, we need to apply masks to hide the part of the composition. So now we can do something called compound mask where we adding more than one mask into a special group. What is special about that? We can have a uh, logical operators between them. So I got two different masks here and right now it's set up to add. So they are adding together into one bigger mask and I can change that to subtract, intersect or even XOR. So we can have logical operation between multiple masks in compound mask. You can create that from the layer panel at the top here. All right, let's move to feature number three. What's that? We got live mesh warp. But wait a moment, there was a warp in version one. That's right, there is a warp tool over here. And that's not what I'm talking about. I don't wanna use this tool, take a look. They already rasterized this whole group for me. Thank you, the assistant. Let's undo that. Command Z or Control Z on Windows. All right, let's go back. Okay, so I don't want to use this tool. I don't want to rasterize my image. What I want to do is I want to click on the image and go over here below your layer panel. There will be live filters group. Look, so many live filters. They really add multiple new live filters in version 2 but now I want to show you this one mesh warp all right we apply live filter on the dog as you can see there's a new icon next to it in the layer panel now we can use a warp and the best part is it's not destructive so I can revisit this layer later go in and make changes so that's much better than using this tool that was in version one. So that's the new live filter for warping images. All right, that's our feature number three. Feature number four, that content link. It's really simple, but very helpful if you're using all three apps or two apps, Affinity Design, Affinity Photo, Affinity Publisher. So if you add a color swatch to one, or you add brush to another, or you add asset panel to another one. All of that is shared across your apps now. So if you add some assets to Affinity Publisher, you will see them in Affinity Designer. So that's really helpful content link. So your assets are linked between your apps. That's great. 
what next? Now we can create a new document from stock and that's not a super important feature. You may say, yeah, that's not an important feature, but for me, it is an important feature because I like to start projects sometimes with the stock image. I don't want to create an artboard and pick the size myself. I just want to go to stock panel, search for something. And now, nowadays you can just drag this new stock image up here to the tool panel and then you will be able to create a brand new document from the stock image. So the size is automatically adjust to this stock image. So you can kick off the project with that. I really like it, so I put it on my list. All right, let's jump back to the list. Let's move to feature number six, that a new layer panel and compact mode on iPad. So you may notice that the layer panel is redesigned. It's a little bit different. We got multiple icons to indicate the type of the layer. For example, letter A for text. This is shape, vector shape, rectangle. Over here, we got image. All right, raster layers, everything got their own icon. There's also some color indicators. They change checkboxes to little circles here. So multiple changes in the layer panel, some new features. I made a separate video about the layer panel in Affinity Photo version two. So you can check that out later if you want. That's the feature number six, a brand new layer panel and also compact mode on an iPad. So on an iPad, you can make your layer panel much smaller. This would be really good if you are a digital artist, maybe try to paint in iPad, on iPad using Affinity Photo or something like that. You can make the small version of layer panel. All right, what next? Let's move to feature number seven. It's also related to iPad. Now we got this comment controller like that on your screen where you can see your key buttons you may remember from the keyboard. So we got we got Alt, Shift, Command, and that's really great for people like me because I'm using desktop version 95% of time and really rarely use the iPad version. And when I use iPad version, I always forget what was the shift, two fingers on the screen or three fingers on the screen, what is the control, one finger or two fingers. So we got all of those shortcuts in the past, but you must remember which, how many fingers and we must place on the screen for each button, virtual button, but now you can actually see them. So that's really helpful. And as I, as I mentioned for people like me that 90%, 80% of your time is on desktop and then you jump on iPad to finish something on the go. And that's, that's much easier now with this new command controller. So I like it. All right, feature number eight, multiple layer effects. That's across the version two in publisher and also in designer as well. So what we can do now, we can apply more than one layer effect of the same kind. So I can give this outline. All right. All right. It's semi transparent. So it's look like that. Okay. I got this black outline and then I want one more outline. I just click the plus button. And now I can do one more outline without any problem. Okay. So, and I can click plus button again and I got third outline here. So now you can apply multiple copies of the same effect on the object. You don't need to make duplicates of the objects like in the past. So that's really nice. That was feature number eight. We are moving forward to feature number nine. And this is a new way of making masks, making masks based on the hue or luminosity of the picture you're working on. So I already put adjustment layer here to adjust the exposure here, make everything darker, but I don't want this to apply to everything in the image. So what I can do, of course, I can do a mask and use black and white color to mask part of this adjustment. But nowadays you can use different kind of masks. So we can click here to mask layer and let's use luminosity range mask. And with that, we can limit which part of the image is affected with this layer, darker part or brighter part. And this way you can mask out part of something using the luminosity map. That's really handy. All right. And the last feature I want to mention today, feature number 10, is all about new tool. There's a new tool called style picker tool. You can find it on the left, just below the regular 
color picker. And thanks to this tool, you can pick a style from one object to another very quickly, like that. So we don't need to try to recreate the style manually. You can just pick the style, the color, all of the effects with the style picker tool. All right, so those are my 10 new features introduced in Affinity Photo version 2. There are many new features, of course, more than 10 as you can guess. So if you are here for the first time, I recommend you guys to subscribe to my channel so you will not miss the next tutorial. All right, thank you and see you later. Bye.